let's welcome Professor Taiha. This is his second last lecture uh, in this Simpa school. Uh, so he will continuing uh, uh, his uh, lecture on the containment or, or power of ideas. Over to you, Professor Taiha. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to move on to the next uh, part of my lectures when we're going to talk about uh, containments of uh, powers of ideals. <clears throat> so uh, as before, I'm going to focus on uh, the polynomialing over the complex numbers, and this polynomialing is corresponding to the n-dimensional uh, projective space. So particularly, it has n plus one variables. Um, so a uh, very simple uh, recall how uh, symbolic powers was defined. So if I take an ideal i in R and an, a positive integer m, then the m symbolic power of i is given to be the intersections of all prime ideal p inside the associate prime of i. And looking at the localization of the nth power of i, uh, contract back to R. So particularly uh, from here, it's very easy to see that uh, that i to the m is always contained in i to the symbolic m power by definition, um, just because i to the m is always inside the right-hand side. Um, and so the, so the natural question, so the natural question uh, is that for which values of M and R, would we have the other containments, I to the symbolic M contained inside I to the R. <clears throat> so um, uh, to what uh, this questions, uh, uh, which is very much related to the study of uh, different topologies uh, or ionic topologies, and also uh, very much closely connected to the ransom skoda theorem. There's a very well celebrated theorem. So let me state the theorem. Uh, so this is maybe 3.1. And this theorem um, was first, first proved by I, Lazarsfeld, and uh, Karen Smith in around 2000 using a method in, uh, from algebraic geometry and uh, then generalized by Hoxter and Hunicke in 2001 using a characteristic P method. And so what they prove is the following. Um, they prove that if I, uh, maybe I should write like this, maybe uh, I should write in a more general setting, let I be a radical ideal. So again, they're going to focus on radical ideal of big height H in a um, regular ring. R, then um, for all R being a positive integers, we have we have the following containments that the symbolic HR power of I is contained in I to the R. <clears throat> so um, if you're not familiar with what it means being big height, right, then it's, uh, it's quite simple. You look at all the associated primes of the ideal and then take the, max, uh, take the maximal height, right? So maybe I should make a note here. So big height of I is the same as the height or the maximal height of an associate prime of I. 
Um, there's a uh, slightly um, more general version of this theorem that's discovered by uh, Johnson. Uh, and the proof is really not uh, much different from what uh, Hoxha and Hunicke had. Um, so again, let I be as before. So it's a radical ideal in a regular uh, uh, regular rings. Uh, we can just think think about R being just this polynomial ring. Um, um, and for any um, natural number k and a one up to a k being non-negative integers, uh, we have the symbolic power h k plus a one plus up to a k is contained in um, is contained in the symbolic a1 plus 1 power of i times the symbolic a k plus 1 of i. So uh, if we take a1 up to a k being all zero, uh, we're going to get back uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, theorem. So uh, let's look at an example here. Let's see particularly what does it give us in a very specific situation. So if we uh, look at a set of points, so let x, um, so let x be a set of point, and say in P two, uh, and uh, i is just the defining ideal of x. Then uh, the big height. It's very easy to see that h uh, here is going to be two. <coughs> in fact, um, any set of point in uh, P two would have height two. Um, and so the containments, so so the theorem or the containments, the containment that we just saw becomes. So let's look at. Uh, uh, specific value of r right so if so i'm looking at this containment okay so if r is one basically it is saying that we have i uh becomes so i to the two r contained in i to the r right so particularly if r is one you have i square contained in i if r is two you get i to the fourth containing i square and if r is three you get I to the six symbolic power containing I to the third, etc. Now uh, the first containment is kind of simple to see. Uh, so the, the 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 interesting containment will start from uh, from here. So uh, when uh, uh, after this theorem, of course, a lot of work have been uh, put forth to uh, understand the following natural questions. Can we improve this containment? This celebrated containment. And I'm I'm going to focus on this guy, on the original original containments by uh, put by I Dasfer Smith and uh, Hoffs and Hunicke. <coughs> So in, in, uh, in, in an attempt to uh, improve these containments, there are, there are a number of conjecture that have been stated. Now, in order to improve this containment, there are two different approaches. Either you make this guy, this, the left-hand side larger, or you make the right-hand side smaller. Uh, one way to make the, uh, the left-hand side larger is to decrease the power, right? If smaller power, means bigger ideal. Um, one way to make the right-hand side smaller is to multiply with some other ideals. If you multiply with the ideals, you actually make your uh, uh, ideal smaller. Particularly, uh, one way to do that is to multiply with powers of the maximal ideals, okay? 
So here I'm going to denote uh, maybe a say notation here. So M is going to be the maximum ideal. So in uh, in attempt to uh, improve this uh, this uh, 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 containment, there are two conjectures. Um, so this one is maybe I have three point four here, and this is what I call the what is called a Hubbard conjecture. And Hubbard's conjecture say that uh, again I'm going to focus on homogeneous ideal as we are now back into the polynomial rings be a homogeneous ideal and that's what people in geometry are, <coughs> are mostly interested in um, of big height h uh, then for all are being a positive integers we have I to the HR minus H plus one is contained in I to the R. So Harmon basically conjecture that we can drop the, the power on the left-hand side by H minus one. Now it's very easy to see, uh, to come up with example where if without this one, the containment fails. So uh, this one, if it's possible to prove, it'll be the best uh, possibilities uh, or it'll be the best that one can hope for. Uh, the other conjecture, so this is when, uh, uh, if one wants to make the left-hand side larger. So the other conjecture is called the Habern Hunity. Conjecture. And uh, again, with uh, the same, uh, uh, I should say be a radical, maybe I would add the word radical idea here, be a homogeneous radical ideal. So, so let I be as before. Uh, then, um, so, the simple statements of Huniki, uh, Hubble and Huniki containment is that uh, if we keep the left-hand side being the same, so the symbolic HR power, then we can make this right-hand side smaller by multiply with an appropriate power of the maximum ideal. So that's M to the R times H minus one, and then I to the R for all R being an integer. There's a slightly more uh, general forms for this containments where uh, instead of looking at HR, you're looking at I to the so symbolic power of R times T plus H minus one. Uh, and if you remember the, um, the Mayes conjecture, you, you, you should notice where this uh, quantity comes from. And again, of course, if T is one, you are, you are back into this situation. And it should be contained in M to the R H minus one, I to the symbolic T power to the power R for all R and T being positive integers. Now, um, unfortunately, not much is known about the, the second conjecture, Harbon uh, Hunnicki conjecture, but there are counter example for the first conjecture. So let me give you uh, an example. So this is called the uh, full mass configurations of point. And uh, in this case, we're going to focus on P2, so point P2. I mean, R is going to be polynomial ring in three variables, right? Correspond to P2. And we consider I to be the ideal uh, with three generators, X times Y to the N minus 
z to the n, y times z to the n minus i to the n, and z i to the n minus y to the n. Uh, this is the defining ideal. of n square plus three points in P2. So let me let me give you uh, maybe an example of uh, how this configuration looks like. So uh, this, this is how it looks like when n equal to uh, three. So uh, this this is a, a flow map configuration of 12 points. Uh, you have, uh, 12 points, so nine of them here, and then three here. And what you can see is that through, uh, uh, there's a, there are lines going through four points, right? So this side, even though it looks kind of curvy, but those are lines. So you get a lot of lines going through uh, 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 four points, right? And uh, the 12 points would be the intersections of three lines, okay? So, this is what the Fermat configuration looks like. And um, it is proved, so it is proved by, uh, maybe I should write Dumnitsky and um, Tataj Gazinska uh, in 2013 when n equal to three. And uh, more generally by uh, Haburn and Sicilianu in 2015 for uh, all ends that if you look at the third symbolic powers, it failed to be inside uh, uh, I square. Now, if you uh, if you look back if you look back here, right? So these are the known containment. If you want to improve, right? So maybe I put that here. If you want to improve, well, if you want to improve the second ones, well, one way is to do that is to drop the power, right? So we're looking for if i to the third is contained in i square. And the other way is to increase the right hand side, right? So uh, if you keep i to the fourth, the question is, is it inside m square i square, for example? So those are the conjectural uh, uh, containments. And uh, what uh, um, this uh, example is, uh, is telling us is that for the Fermat's configurations, uh, the conjectural containments fail because it's already failed right at the first uh, values of R, first non-trivial values of R. Uh, maybe I'll give you a, a, another uh, slightly more, uh, uh, more general, uh, or maybe, maybe more complicated uh, set of points. So maybe, maybe it looks like this. So uh, this is the uh, collection of point where you take uh, 19 triple points. So there are a lot of intersection between these lines, right? So uh, you have 12 lines. Right? So maybe I'll put down here 12 lines. And if we take I to be the ideals of 19 triple point that we see here, so for example, uh, this is a triple point, but of course there are also double point which we are not considering, right? So we only consider triple points and there's 19 of them. Uh, then it's known that uh, once again, the third symbolic power is not contained in I square. So these are the two of a very uh, 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 rare list of uh, uh, counter example to, uh, to this containments. Um, so maybe I'll give you an exercise that you can just try. So um, I don't remember what number it is, maybe 3.7. Um, find uh, example um, where 
the containment i to the hr minus h plus one containing i to the r fails with r bigger than say three right so so far all known in all known count example it always fail when r equal to two right so it always fail at the smallest value of r uh there's and as i said there's not too many count examples so uh, among all the known color example, there's none uh, that actually it fails for higher uh, power R here. Okay, so uh, of course, one might want to ask, so how is this containment related to the interpolation problem? So how is containment problem or conjecture uh, related to the interpolation problem. Uh, particularly, what I'm interested in is the Chudnovsky and the Mays conjecture. So uh, for that, I'm going to move on to uh, the next section where I'm going to talk about uh, Chutnovsky Dimay uh, conjecture and stable containment. So the connection between uh, con uh, containment uh, problem and uh, interpolation problem or particularly Chudnovsky and Demaris conjecture is uh, quite obvious in the following lemma. Uh, so I don't know what number it should be. So let me just, uh, just give it any numbers, 3.11. Uh, it said that the Harburn Muniki containment implies Chudnovsky and the May. Uh, particularly, if you look back at uh, uh, Hubble and Hunicke containment, right? So this is the conjecture. Uh, if you look at the simple form, then this simple form will imply Chudnovsky's conjecture. The general, uh, the more general forms, this guy will imply Dimay's conjecture. And so let's see. Uh, Let's see uh, why. So, uh, since you know this is a lecture series, and um, and uh, I should give you some proof at least, right? So uh, maybe I'll, I'll prove this uh, this uh, results because it's kind of give us an understanding uh, why containment can be used to study um, bounds for the Vashmit constant, for example. So um, so. Uh, Maybe I'll write I for I X, right? So X is a set of point. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll write, I'll, I'll mention that. So here X in P and is a set of point. Okay, when you write I for I X, then it's very easy to see that for a set of point, it has the high and the big high are the same and they're both uh, n, so h is n. So that's the big height. Um, so suppose that the Harburn Hunicke containment
uh, suppose that this containment holds, okay? That means, and let me just uh, uh, work with the, 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 the more general versions because the other uh, sim simpler version would be uh, uh, similar and actually easier to work with. Uh, suppose that you have this containment. So I symbolic power R times T plus H minus one contains in M to the R H minus one, I to the symbolic power T to the power R. So this is uh, uh, Haber and Hunicke containment. Suppose that this is true. Then one, one thing that follows from here is if you have two ideals, one contain one is contained in the other one, then the initial degree of this guy has to be bigger than or equal to the initial degree of this guy, right? Because whatever appear in here will also appear in here. Um, so that implies that alpha of the left-hand side, right? so I to the R is, uh, or maybe T plus H minus one, is bigger than or equal to alpha of the right-hand side. But this alpha of a product, is just the product of alpha, right? The least generating degree of a product of two ideals, just the product of the two least generating degrees. So this is gonna be alpha of M to the R H minus one, times alpha of i to the t to the power r. And because again, this is product, right? m to the power of something, it's just product of m with itself. Uh, and m has uh, initial degree being one, the maximum ideals are generated in degree one. So you have exactly r times h plus minus one here, and uh, sorry, uh, plus. Right, the least, the, the least, least degree of the product is just the sum of the least degree. Um, so here, and then here, again, power R is gonna come out. So you get R times alpha of I to the power T. So now if we divide both sides by a common denominator, right? so you take alpha of I to the R T plus H minus one, and then we divide it by the power, it's gonna be bigger than equal to, <coughs> um, if you look at this, if you divide it by the same guy here, of course the R is gonna cancel, right? So what, what we have left is alpha of I to the power T plus H minus one and divided by T plus h minus one. And uh, taking the limits, the limits of the left-hand side, of course the right-hand side is already fixed of the left-hand side. As uh, r goes to infinity, Right, the right-hand side doesn't depend on R. So if you take the limits of the right, uh, left-hand side as R goes to infinity, the right-hand side stays the same, but the left-hand side, we know that this is the definition of the Walschmidt constant. What we have is alpha hat of now I is at least alpha of I to the T plus H minus one divided by T plus H minus one. Now, of course, because H is N, you basically get the values conjecture, right? So, uh, so, so the statement is proof. Uh, this statement actually suggested uh, something more. Uh, so far, again, in, in the proof, whatever I presented here, so far I haven't used anything, uh, any um, uh, assumption from the fact that H uh, X is a set of points. Right? So all I have used so far here is that the hubbard hunicke containments is satisfying. So if the, so so the the same argument would hold for any ideals, any radical homogeneous ideal, as long as you have these containments, right? And 
if this con if we have this containment, what we derived is that the Borschmidt constant is bounded by these expressions. Where if you look at an ideal in general, uh, each the big high is no longer necessarily n. It could be any big high. So this suggests that what should be the corresponding uh, inequality for uh, a radical homogeneous ideal in general of big high h. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so, uh, so let me um, make a remark here, another remark here. Uh, uh, Professor Han, uh, can, yes. uh, can you state the conjecture in terms of the Walshman constant? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? Can you state this conjecture in terms of the Walshman constant? Uh, the second one, Harbert and Yuk, uh, Harbert and Yuk conjecture in terms of Walshman constant. Uh, uh, I, I don't quite understand because uh, uh, because how about Huniki con uh, conjecture is about containment of ideals. So uh, and, I, and 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 the Walsh like and, uh, and the Walsh constant. Like to see of, it, uh, okay, continue, continue. Uh, and and the Walsh constant appear in Tudnovsky and Dimai's conjecture. So so if you if I if I move back um, to my uh, to my last. I think to my last lecture, uh, this is what the Trudnovsky's conjecture state. It said that the Varshmid uh, constant of an ideal of a set of point is bounded below by this quantity. And the Demise conjecture um, generalized that. It said that the Varshmid constant is bounded by this quantity where you are allowed to take alpha of the T symbolic power of the ideal instead of just the first power. Okay, okay, so, okay. so Chudnovsky and the Mary's conjecture is about the Wolfschmidt constants, and this conjecture comes from comes from uh, come from the interpolation problem, right? And uh, what I'm talking here today is about containments. Conjecture about containments of power of ideals. Uh, we do not know if these containments are true. In fact, we do know that uh, this containment already fails, right? However, if we know, if we somehow happen to know that this containment is true, then what I have just shown is that that would imply that Tudnovsky and the Mai conjecture are true, right? So the, the Mai conjecture, let me recall the, the Mai here. The Mai is uh, state exactly what uh, this is saying. Alpha hat of I of X is at least alpha of I of X to the power T plus N minus one divided by n, uh, t plus n minus one, sorry. Right? And so for, for us, because we know that for ideal point, h is exactly n. So uh, this quantity is exactly the same as this quantity. That, does it, does it uh, make it a little bit uh, clearer? Thank you very much. OK. Um, thank you uh, for <laughs> slowing me down sometime. Um, getting excited and I move a little bit too fast. Uh, okay, so so the remark here, maybe I put a number here, 3.12, just to have a number. Um, if you look at this proof again, uh, all we are using is this containment, and then at the very end, to get this desired uh, inequality, we take the limit when R goes to infinity. So in fact, you do not need to know this containment for any R. All you need to know is, well, you have this containment for infinitely many values of R so that you can take the limit, right? So the first remark is to establish, to imply the Nimai and Chudnovsky. conjectures, we only need Habern Muniki containment for infinitely many values of R. So that's, that's an important thing. So you don't have to prove 
for all R, all we need to do is to establish this containment for infinitely many values for R. And, uh, and one way to ensure that you have this containment for infinitely many value of R is to say, well, the containment should be true for all R big enough, right? Uh, to avoid, remember that we have, uh, we have counter example to this containment. So one naturally might th think that uh, there should be, there might be counter example to this containment as well. But a counter example for this containment is uh, happen for a very small value of R. In fact, R is two. There's no known example when R is bigger than two. So the question is, and, and so the hope is that even if there could be counter example for this containment, which we don't know, uh, but if we take R big enough, we can actually avoid the counter example, right? And so uh, to make this, uh, this uh, uh, conjecture slightly uh, weaker, right? So maybe I will state the uh, stable containment. Check for stable containment. And so I'm stating, restating the same, uh, the same containment, right? So this is stable aberrant. Basically say that uh, you have I to the HR minus H minus one plus one containing I to the R for all R big enough, right? And uh, stable Haber and Huniki, uh, we want I to the HR to be contained in M to the R, H minus one, I to the R, again for all R big enough. And in fact, uh, having this containment for all R big enough is one way to ensure that we have the containment for infinitely many values of R, but uh, in practice, we do not really need that much. We Again, all we need is some containment for infinitely many values of R. So maybe I'll state, I'll state here or um, maybe or uh, more generally. or more generally, let me state even the full containment. So I to the R T plus H minus one containing M to the R H minus one, I to the T R for infinitely many values of R. So this is the now the, the, the stable containments. And uh, if we can establish the stable containments, then we have Chudnovsky and Dimai, right? So let me make a, again a remark. That stable Hamman Huniki, uh, whatever version it is, implies the Mai and Chudnovsky. Right. Okay, so 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 um <clears throat> so 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 next um uh I'm going to move on to the techniques that we use and as I mentioned before is, is the technique of specialization. So I'm going to talk about specialization in more details. Uh, and hopefully you, you, you'll see uh, what I was talking about last time. So specialization. Um, so uh, let's let's talk about uh, a specialization from a, a general uh, point of view, and then we'll focus on point specializations following cool. 
So this is exactly uh, how Kuhl defined specialization in, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the 40s. Uh, let me give you a definition. 3.15, I think. Um, and this is by Kuhl in 1948. Uh, so let x represents just for shorthand represent the variable x zero up to x n. So instead of writing the variable all the time, we just write x. Um, let a uh, be a point in our parameter space. If you recall last time when we talk about general and very general set of point, uh, the specialization. specialization at A, so it's attached to this vector A, uh, is a map which we denote by pi of A. And this map go from uh, the set, so it's a, a, just a set map, right, from the uh, set of ideals inside so you look at the field extensions and you look at the polynomial bring over this field extension so the variables are still x0 up to x n but the field now are uh, uh, the field extension with the uh, new indeterminate z uh, to the set of ideals in just the usual polynomial ring. Uh, given by, so this map is given as follows. So uh, if you take an ideal i, so this ideal i is of course inside this polynomial ring, right? So variables are again x uh, in, in the, the axis, but in the coefficients, you're allowed to have functions a rational function in Z, right? So it's going to be, so I'm going to look at um, F of Z and X, right? So this is uh, a polynomial inside I. So it variable is going to be Z and it coefic its coefficients are rational functions uh, sorry, the variable we can, uh, are going to be x and, and coefficient are going to be rational function in z. But I would only look at those that has no denominator on the z, right? And, and then I evaluate that at a. So substitute A for Z, right? So this is uh, this is a uh, um, the precise definitions of specialization, and uh, maybe I'll give you an example. And again, this example also exhibits one fact that specializations is not as simple as just specialize a collection of generators, uh, because this is a map on the ideal, and you can't just go and and say, well. If the ideal generated by a bunch of polynomials, uh, again, with uh, uh, in a variable x with rational co uh, coefficient in z, then I can just specialize a or z, and then and then I get the, the specialization of the ideal. That's not true. And the and example is the following. So if I take the ideal i to be x, uh, maybe two generator, uh, x and x plus uh, y, z, so this is of course inside C, uh, Z, and X, right? That's a that's a, that's a, that's an ideal generated by two elements, and this uh, uh, of course two generators. Now of course you can see that these two generators are chosen in a very odd way because there's an axiom, there's also an axiom where you can just go in 
and cancel it, right? So in, uh, let me just, uh, sorry, uh, let me just say this. So this is Z, there's only one variable Z and then there are two variable X and Y, okay? And then I'm specializing this at the point zero, right? So then if I'm looking at pi and A is now my uh, zero, right? So the, the matrix full of zero, or in fact, in this is just one, uh, there's only one variable Z. So then in A, it's just a number. So it's the, uh, the value number zero. If I apply this, I can't just say that I'm going to substitute Z uh, being zero in here. I, I, can't, I can't substitute zero here, right? So this is not going to be the same as X and then X plus zero, right? Because this is just X. Because when you have Y times zero, it's gone. And this ideal is X. In fact, in fact, the correct answer for for this ideal i, as you will see, is that uh, because I did uh, create this extra uh, uh, x for, uh, for 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 no reason, I can just forget about this x and think about um, uh, think about uh, this as. Um, well, maybe, maybe that is not even the case. So let me just tell you what uh, pi zero of i should be. It should be x and y. So um, yeah, so you can get rid of this uh, X and again, Y, Z, because Z is, a, is, is an element in the field. So when you generate an ideal, you can forget about Z, right? Z, you can think of it as one. So you have the generator X and Y. If you specialize X and Y, you just get X and Y. So this should be the right specialization. And if you specialize the generator, you get the wrong one, okay? However, so what is nice about, uh, what is good about uh, specialization is even though it's not true that you can just go and specialize the generators, but you can almost always do that. So there's always the word almost, right? And it means, for us means on an open subset, you can do that. And so the theorem, and this is due to cruel, uh, basically say that, uh, so first maybe I'll write, uh, maybe just let I and J be ideals in this extension rings, a field, polynomial ring over this extension field. Uh, uh, suppose that I is given by a bunch of polynomials. So F1, Z, X, F, Q, Z, X. We know that you can't just go and specialize by setting Z to A. However, then there exists an open subset. And again, then just mean that it's empty. W of the parameter space such that if you specialize this ideal with respect to a vector inside W is the same as specializing uh, uh, the generators. So we cannot always do that, but as this example was saying, however, there's an open subset where instead of looking at zero, if you look at A, when A sits inside that subset, then you can actually do this specialization by simply specializing uh, the generators. Um, the second uh, uh, part of the theorem basically say specializing, or at least this probably works uh, uh, as well with product and some uh, and, and, and sorry, in and, and intersection of ideals, right? So there exists an open then subset U inside the parameter space such that for all A inside U, what we have is that if you specialize the intersections, 
you, it's the same as specializing each of them and then look at the intersections. And if you specialize the product, it's the same way. And there are example where it's not true to, uh, to take U to be the whole space. So U, there will be value A where this identity are not, or this, this equalities are not true. Okay, so uh, what this is telling us is that uh, because of this open subset, if we specialize once, then we have one open subset. Okay, so uh, and 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 uh, or maybe I sh should put a corollary here. Three point eighteen. Corollary is that if we start with um, uh, maybe let's so again uh, let X Z be the be the set of S generic point as we have seen before in Pn over Z, Cz, okay? Uh, then for fixed values of M, R, and L, there exists an open dense subset. U and of course it's going to depends on this uh, parameter M R and L inside the uh, parameter space such that if you specialize for all A inside this M R and L, if you specialize the symbolic power. of this generic set of point. So this is the M. Uh, it's the same as looking at the ideal of the specialized set of point and its symbolic values. Uh, and it also works when you specialize a product. So maybe MZ here to the power L, uh, I, to the power R of XZ. It's the same as you look at M to the power L times I of XA to the power R. So what this is saying is, we know that in general, specializations and, uh, uh, and product and, and, and intersection do not work as well. However, on an open subset, taking special specialization of product or intersection is the same as taking product or intersection of specializations. So that applies to symbolic power because symbolic power is just intersection of powers. And again, product and usual power. Uh, and so this gives us a strategy to prove uh, Chudnovsky and the Mays and the Mays conjecture. So maybe I'll, I'll state it here and then uh, I'll should be done for today. So. Uh, strategy to prove uh, Chudnovsky and Imayi conjecture for, and let me just put sufficiently general point. And we'll see why it has to be sufficiently general point. Um, so the strategy is we're going to establish containments or inequalities that we want for the set of generic point. There's only one collection of generic points. So at least the point are known. So 
it should be easier to establish any containment that we want or any inequality that we want. So establish. The desire. Containment. Or inequalities. For the generic set of points. of points in this guy. And then we specialize, right? So use specializations to get the desire containment. or in inequality for a general set of points in P and. And again, I put general in quotation because we don't know how general it has to be. So let me give you an example. Uh, maybe this is a result by, uh, Excuse me, 3.19. This is by Tohaneu uh, uh, and uh, C in 2019. And what they prove is that they established uh, Harbour's containment. Right? So they prove that I, uh, the genetic set of point, to symbolic power, again, H is now N, contains in I to the power R for all R beginner. So the stable Harbon containments for the generic set of point, right? So what we are doing is that now if I use specializations, I know that if I fix the powers, right? If I fix a power, there's an open subset so that if I specialize the symbolic powers, I get the symbolic power downstairs. If I specialize a power, I get the power downstairs. So particularly that leads to I, if I look at the specialized set to the same guy, it contained in I to this uh, same power here. However, remember that the reason why we have this uh, uh, containment is because you know that this is the same when you specialize, right? And this is the same when you specialize. But this specialization only hold for uh, A inside some open subset depending on this value R, Okay, so if one wants to establish the uh, stable Hubble and conjecture, meaning uh, it should be uh, a containment for all values of R, you have to get the uh, A to be the intersections of all these open subset, right? So basically what this is implying is that uh, stable Hubble and containment or conjecture holds for any set xA with A inside the intersection of all this UR where R run from, or maybe R is big enough. So there's infinitely many open subset and you have to take the intersection. That's why it's true for a very general set of points. So true or a very general set of points. And the same idea uh, that people use to obtain uh, 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 the stable Haber and Hunicke containments, and that implies uh, 
uh, Chudnovsky and Dimai's conjecture for a very general set of points. So the task that we, uh, for, for us, when we start looking at this problem is to somehow come up with a way that either you can find one open subset that works for all power R, meaning you have to find one open subset that works for all, uh, all these specializations, or you can only do specialization once for one power. And, uh, and our approach is to take the later. We, we do specialization for one power, but we prove that if you get one power, somehow you will, you will get stable power, uh, uh, one, one containment, somehow you will get stable containment later on. So that's the, uh, that's the new uh, uh, addition to the problem that, that we are giving. And, uh, and that's what, that's what we are, I'm, I'm going to talk about in, in my next lecture. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Ha. Uh, just one uh, question regarding to this stable harbor condition. Are you fixing the height every time? Well, yeah. So if I, because I'm fixing uh, uh, the, 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 ambience, the ambient space, right? So we are looking at a set of point inside Pn. So for a set of point inside Pn, the high is, the big high is always n. Right? If you, if you look at an ideal of a sub variety of Pn, then the big high could be different, right? But if you set a point, meaning zero dimensional uh, sub, sub variety, then, then uh, because it has zero dimension, so the high has to be n. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so actually it's a very good question that what happened if you look at ideals, more general ideals, meaning ideals that are uh, defining ideal of uh, sub variety, not necessarily a set of point. Somebody tried it? Yeah, so we also look at, uh, for example, uh, determinantal ideals uh, or um, the defining ideals of uh, a star configurations. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, uh, that's still quite, quite open. Uh, um, we, we look at uh, determinantal ideals and, and star configuration just because for those classes of ideals, we understand the symbolic powers very well. We know exactly what a symbolic power looks like. So we can actually use combinatorial techniques, just counting techniques to prove this kind of containment. Okay. Uh, uh, are there any, thank you very much. Uh, are there yeah. any questions in the chat box? Uh, no one? Oh, okay, there are none. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the audience? Uh, can, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you very much, Professor Ha. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, can you explain uh, what, what are you going to do in the final lecture tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, so in the final lecture tomorrow, I'm going to talk about a method that we employ so that we can avoid uh, taking uh, one open subset for every R. So the method that we, we, we employ is to apply specialization for one power only. And, uh, and then after, if you apply specialization for one power, you would have one containment down here for a, very, for a fixed value R. And then from that fixed one containment for fixed value R, we prove that you get the same kind of containment for R beginner for this, so that you get a stable containment. So that's, and, uh, that's uh, the, uh, what was uh, the reason why uh, they are keeping the ring as regular in the ideal when uh, you were discussing about the inequalities. So, um, so, so for for uh, for people, I mean, so 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 this problem originates from Harbin's uh, study, and Harbin is uh, is an algebraic geometer, and for for algebraic geometer, uh, their rings is always um, polynomial rings, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 class of uh, rings in general that exhibit a lot of nice property as polynomial ring would be the class of regular rings. But mm -hmm. uh, of course, for people working in these problems, the rings are always the polynomial ring corresponding to the projective uh, space. Yeah. I was I was just speculating the same because uh, all the examples are over the polynomial ring. So polynomial rings mm -hmm. are generally right. Regular. Right. Right, and, and, and that's because our approach, I mean, our, our purpose was still coming from the interpolation problems that happen in the polynomial rings. 
But if you only care about the containment itself, not, you know, Chudnovsky, Dimai, conjecture or interpolation problems, if you only care about the containments, then it makes sense to ask about containment inside any kind of ideals, uh, any kind of rings that you want. So you could start with regular rings or you could go to rings, uh, uh, any, 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 um, and any nice class of rings that you want, maybe excellent and uh, um, essentially finite types over a field, for example, uh, or even rings uh, with uh, uh, over a, a positive characteristic, right? So, uh, so the containment problem itself is stated for uh, any ring in general, and there are people who study containment problems uh, with rings that are not necessarily polynomial rings. Yeah, one very per particular question. So are there some setup for the monomial cases too? Uh, okay, that's a very good question. So yeah, so the containments that I stated is known to be true for square free monomial uh, uh, square free monomial ideals and that is uh, that's proof in my uh, in my uh, previous work with uh, Susan Susan Cooper uh, Robert uh, Embrys and and Andrew Hoffel uh, it's not true for monomial ideal in general so there's counter example for monomial ideals uh, but for square free monomial ideals it is true and and the proof uh, for those containments are very combinatorial um, just counting techniques. And what's the trouble with non square free case? Uh, that's a counter example uh, because uh, for square free, uh, it's radical ideals, right? So um, you don't have embedded pram, but for monomial ideals in general, you might have embedded pram and that create problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> now I understand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Taya. Professor. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, thank the speaker once again. Thank you very much. Now you can sleep well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good night. Have a good day. Bye, everyone.